Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 358. Uh, each week um, we meet uh, to uh, review the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Uh, with us today we have um, um, David Rosam. David is a leading uh, internet uh, marketer. He's based in um, West Sussex um, uh, in the sunny south of um, the UK. Um, and um, you can find David at davidrosam.com. Sorry, David, what was that? I interrupted I said, you. It's the misty, grey, horrible, cold UK at the moment. It's um, just, just, just as all you non-UK people think of it. It's like that now. Ah uh, well, yeah, well, it, it, it's sort of like it's it's like a sentence that you guys are on, under. Um, yes. Tim Kapper um, is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com in in the UK. Uh, he's based. Uh, uh, in Corby, about 100 miles uh, north of uh, London. Uh, Tim is also a Google uh, product expert uh, in the Google My Business community. Masataki Wasa, uh, you, uh, sorry, you can find Tim at onlineownership.com. And uh, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net. Um, he's uh, also a Google top contributor um, in the uh, Ad, 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 AdSense uh, community. Have I missed anybody? I don't think so. Um, I, I think we're wrong. Uh, you, can, you can introduce Thelonious when he comes back. <laughs> All right, uh, let's um, go to our questions. We only have six tonight, which is good because they're not easy ones. Um, this one, the first one is from uh, Chris Green, um, and it's titled, Do I Need to Resubmit My Sitemap? But Chris went on to ask, he said, hey, guys, um, we use uh, Yoast SEO to generate the sitemap. Um, which automatically updates when a new post slash page is added. In addition to this, is it best practice to also resubmit the sitemap via Google Search Console on a regular basis? Um, no, you don't need to resubmit. Um, Search Console has your sitemap, anything added, it will it will, um, you know, it'll add it to their, their crawling set. So no, you don't need to re-add. Thank you, Tim. One thing that you may uh, need to look out for though, is that sometimes Yoast seems to get confused um, and not update its, uh, its sitemap. I've come across that a few times uh, when I've been auditing sites. So, um, you should switch the site map, map off in, uh, in Yoast and switch it on again, and normally it'll come alive again. Um, so that's not the answer to, to the question, but it is something that does happen in that, that part of the world. So, so what you're saying is that this is an instance where, uh, um, have you tried turning it off? Um, it, it actually works. Yes, it, it does. It does. Um, However, it's best not to unplug your computer at that stage because it can sometimes mess it up, you know. <laughs> okay. As, well, as we say, in technical circles. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to number two on our run list. Uh, and uh, um, here's a question no one's ever asked before. Uh, Wayne Davis asks... Uh, what do I have to do to rank number one? Wayne, 
Davis went on to say, hello, uh, I changed an old website at the end of last year. 301 redirected the old to the new and rebranded. I have my domain authority back on the new site, but I was wondering what I have to do to rank number one for my business name, search with site links. Um, I think Michael Martin has, has got it about right. Um, be patient. Uh, it's not very long. Um, and I would say you've probably lost a, a, a bit of your uh, your SEO leverage in, in 301 in there. So you're probably going to have to create some more good content to uh, to get to where you were before you uh, before you redirected everything. I assume the business name changed as well. Um, so in, as a part of rebrand and if that brand had been well known, then you want to rank for both, right? For the old and new brand. So it's a case of new business name, formerly old business name. And if people have linked to the site or cited your businesses before, or cited your business before, then they would be in the name of the old business name and people might still be associating your business with the old name so as important as it is that you bank for the new business name that uh, you don't in a sense discard the old business name thank you mr Taghi. all right um let's Go to number three on our run list. This one is from um, Shao Chi Lo. Um, it's titled, How is Page Size Calculated? Um, Shao Chi Lo said, uh, Hi, everyone. I recently have had have a hard time understanding the general ideas of page size. Um, should I only consider the size of HTML or um, also include CSS, JavaScript, and images, uh, et, et, et cetera, CSS, cascading style sheets? Yes. Um add all those things, add all those things that, uh, that, a, uh, that a browser will, will pull in with, with a page. Um, I'm, I, I, I use screen frog, but I've never actually <laughs> looked at the content length header um, data. Maybe I should have. Um, I'm not sure what the content length header is, to be honest. Um, maybe someone else who, uh, maybe someone else knows knows that. But basically, it's not just just some sort of header um, information. It's uh, it's the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, the images, the uh, the hangers on, the uh, paparazzi, and whatever else uh, there are hanging onto a page. Um, so. Yes, I, I imagine that the content length, length header is somewhat smaller uh, than the, the actual page size. Yeah, the content length header is the sort of the length of the <laughs> of the file. So if it's an HTML file, then it would be the H, the size inverted commas of the HTML file. And if it's an image, then you see that of the image. I think the, I think more important thing is why you why are you asking this question? You know, is it because the pages are inverted commas big, therefore loading slowly, and that's causing problems? Um, I think, in the sense that it's not a technical thing to the extent that what I would be looking is how quickly or slowly the page is loading, including all the elements. You know, does it matter as a visitor to your site how large 
the page size is as such compared to how quickly does it load. Yeah, um, and picking up on that, um, the uh, the latest Screaming Frog came out a few months ago. Um, you can um, you, you can do page load um, times on it now um, by linking in with with uh, a Google API. Um, so that you can actually get at those times if you're you're using Screaming Frog. Thank you, David. Just been joined uh, by Michael Fisher Kirchner. How are you, mate? Doing good. Thank you. Yeah, um, Mike, Michael is based on the west coast of the USA. He, uh, he lives not too far from Silicon Valley. Uh, and um, uh, He's um, president of a meetup group uh, in, in, in that area and uh, is head of SEO for uh, Turn River Capital. Yeah, okay, that, that's... Uh, um, importantly, he has a splendid hat that he wears every week and I always feel as if I ought to put a hat on as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a good hat. It's a wonderful hat, yes. Thank you. Okay, well, look, um, uh, Mike, uh, there's um, one that you might be um, interested in. It's um, question three on our run list. It's titled, How Page Size is Calculated. Did you want to add anything to that before we um, roll over to the next? Um, yeah, I don't actually know, um, in actuality, I don't really know this one in, in detail. Uh, I'm presuming this is out of Google Search Console or just t various tools. Various tools, I think. Hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know enough to be able to answer this one. No problem. I just thought it might have been, have been one of those ones that uh, occupied your uh, thoughts. Anyway, question four, titled for organic traffic, what do you prefer to report? It's from Chris Green. Um, and uh, he goes on to ask, uh, do you report sessions or users um, from Google Analytics data? uh i usually prefer sessions um also because it gives me insight uh it gives me insight into terms of what was one of the pages the last page generally or last session situation that drove the user uh to convert or interact depending on what the situation may be um That's generally kind of if I'm uh, putting together my own kind of organic traffic report. Um, but often, um, if it's to understand how much just number of users coming to the site, then kind of reporting upwards, um, the user is going to be my main um, uh, metric to, to put together and show case. Am I allowed to say both? I just kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's both vote for both. Mm. Uh, I don't see why you, you shouldn't uh, track both uh, unless you've got some notion of fitting um, a, a number of uh, a number of metrics in a, a certain size screen or piece of paper for a report. Um, but um, I think they're both important. Okay. All right. Um, if no one has any objections, uh, I think we can move on to the next. 
Here we are, number five on our run list, and it's from JL Faverio. It's titled An Old Website Isn't Showing Up on Google. Um, and uh, JL asks, uh, is there a tool slash link to check if Google ever officially removed a website uh, from their index? Well, I suppose uh, you could use um, the site operator, um, as Scott Clark has uh, offered the in the uh, comments, uh, the first response to this one, um, and uh, then uh, use um, the, the Wayback Machine to uh, see if it did freeze and uh, isn't, isn't there now. Yeah. I'm, I'm not aware of any real tools across the board for any, you know, be able to check. The only other thing you could probably do, although it's just not likely, um, you can see about the old search metrics or sister reports that um, are put out there to see if the um, website ever came up in their list of things that dropped pretty heavily. Yeah. And you, of course, can kind of do the same thing in SEMrush. Um, you can check to see its history. And if you see traffic generally moving along and then suddenly tank the zero, gives you a little bit of a hint. Okay, let's um, go to the next because uh, I have a blank for that one. Number six, uh, for another one from JL Faverio. How to check for competitors uh, in different states. Um, and uh, JL said, uh, what do you use to check for com uh, competitors in different states throughout the United States? Dennis Dubner cryptically said Google. Um, um, I, I guess you could do it rather clumsily using SEMrush and setting the, uh, uh, the search parameters to um, each state in uh, uh, each state you're interested in. But if you're doing 50 of them, it's going to take you a while. Uh, yeah, plus it's going to eat up your credits, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I would maybe, yeah, but I suppose all of them are going to charge you. Um, bright local, local Falcon, but all of those are chargeable on what you're checking um, specifically for those specific local areas. Yeah. <sighs> I, I just wonder what, what, what. Uh, hang, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Um, I'm just thinking. In, I mean, okay. So, firstly, in all of them, you're going to have to create your own tracking for specific. You know, your for your for you for yourself specifically. Um, and then you can add um competitors to that tracking um so semrush allows it but then again like but if you're already tracking your your client in 50 different states then you can add competitors and it will show you the competitors however you must remember that and, and uh, it's going to be like with all of them you will need to be paying more because it's basically a separate or it's you know it's crawling that for that site also so you will be doubling up you know um uh bright local local falcon who else does make, uh, local yeah there's probably some others but you know yeah you are gonna you are gonna pay for that yeah I just wonder, you know, what, why, you know, is, is it that important to know uh, 
um, what your competitors are in the different states and whether your time would be better used uh, focusing on um, um, and making sure that, that you you literally have no competitors. Anyway, I think uh, it's that time again. Yes, it is. It's thank you for watching time. We've done it again. We've answered all of the questions asked this week on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. I'd like to uh, thank um, the, the people uh, on our um, Facebook group but who answer questions uh, throughout the week, uh, as well as our panellists. Uh, we have people like Michael Stricker, um, Michael Martinez, um, Dave Elliott, um we we thank you and scott um and yeah look we really thank you you make it um, such a, a valuable resource and uh, your contribution is uh, valued and appreciated all right so we'll be back at the same time to do this uh, all again next week um but for now it's good night and i'll i'll try and uh, close this off. Thank you very much.